Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Tiramina, and I've got two very special guests with me. Coach Bell. Nice to be here. And I got Coach Simon as well, our freshman nice football coach. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right. Um, I want to get into it. Um, coach, welcome back. It's been a long time since I've had you on the preview show. It is. It's, it's great to be back. It's been a lot of fun. A good summer. Awesome. Um, also, you recently won the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. You were involved in that. You, you, um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I was, uh, I was part of the uh, 2022 class, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was a great honor. You know, and on one hand, it means I've been around a while, uh, but it just means that uh, I've had great players and been lucky to coach with some outstanding assistant coaches, and we've had some good teams. And, uh, you know, so it was, uh, even though it's an individual honor, I, I really feel it was more of a program honor for all mm -hmm. the people who have been part of this thing over the last 20-some uh, years. When did you start coaching, Coach? Oh, geez. My first year coaching, I, I actually was coaching when I was in college as a student assistant uh, in the late 80s. And then I, did, I coached for a year at Birmingham Seahome while I did my student teaching. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was the head coach at Linden High School in... Uh, 91 and 92, and then St. Clement High School, 93 and 94. Uh, was at Lake Orion, 95, 96, and 97 as an assistant, became a head coach at Lake Orion, 98, so. Awesome. Um, also, you, you did step away back in 2016 to become the athletic director. I What's did. What's that experience been like? Well, you know, the uh, 2016, I served as both the athletic director and the head football coach, mm -hmm. but uh, I promised our superintendent at the time that if I took the athletic director job that uh, following the 2016 season that I would step away uh, so I could focus on uh, the other sports and really learn the ins and outs of the job because it's, uh, even though I've been involved with athletics most of my adult life, um, there, there is a learning curve. It was good. It was good to spend time, uh, you know, really with the other sports and uh, learned a lot. Uh, but uh, make a long story short, uh, John Blackstock stepped in and did a good job, as our, as our coaches all know, uh, when John approached me mid-season of last year, letting me know that he was going to step down at the end of the year. Uh, we had conversations with uh, our school administration, and they agreed that they would support me in taking it back on. So, you know, in the athletic world, uh, you know, my number one responsibility is to all of our teams. Mm -hmm. uh, in my spare time, I get to coach football. So it's... Uh, you know, we're, we're, our athletic program, you know, we're, we're in good shape. You know, we've got systems in place. Uh, the teams know that they have my, uh, I, I want to make sure there's not a drop off in my mm -hmm. support for them just because I'm coaching football. And a lot of the stuff that we do in terms of coaching football, a lot of the preparation is done during the summer. It's done late in the evenings. It's done on Sundays uh, so that I can focus on my job as the AD. Awesome. Um, I wanted to recap last season briefly. Um, we had a great group of kids. Uh, the record was we, were th we finished the season three and six. Our f sub varsity programs were undefeated at nine and zero in both freshman and JV. Can you recap briefly about how the how that season went? Well, I know they, it was it was frustrating. You know, obviously uh, freshman JV had outstanding seasons, a lot mm -hmm. of talent, uh, very good coaching staff. So they did a nice job and uh, bodes well for the future here of our mm -hmm. program. Varsity wise, you know, they started off great with uh, uh, a big win over you guys mm -hmm. and uh, the following week went down to North Farmington, and I think they they were caught by surprise, a little shell shocked after that game, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and, and they they played one of the state's toughest schedules last year, mm -hmm. as we will again, and it was hard to recover. They, at times they played some really good football, mm -hmm. uh, at times they struggled, um, you know, it was a little uncharacteristic as to uh, you know as to as to why they struggled. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them, they were young, inexperienced, mm -hmm. they had some injuries, and you know, in our league, which is, is there's no forgiveness in our league, right. if, you, if you're not at 100%, you have a hard time competing, and I think that's really what happened. You know, they just, they, they lost a couple, they lost some confidence, and it was just really hard to turn around. Still a tremendous group of kids, and also, um, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the off-season, um, how... How, how the let's talk about how the off season and how important from bouncing back from last year and learning from last year how that will translate to this season. Well, the good news is is uh, you know me coming back as as a head football coach. I, I, I know the student athletes 
but you know them at a different level when you're their coach. So everybody gets a fresh start. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I've been impressed with, and this is a credit to, uh, to Coach Blackstock, Coach Powell, uh, you know, and the staff that's been in place, the kids work hard. They show mm -hmm. up to everything. The kids work hard. So they're putting the work in. So our focus then this summer has been let's become great football players. You know, they work hard in the weight room. Uh, like I said, they're at everything. But let's make sure that we're working hard to be great football players. And uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge in terms of uh, they're, they're relearning a new offensive system. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Coach Ricky Powell, our defensive coordinator, has made a couple of adjustments defensively. They're learning that, a couple of different coverages, mm -hmm. um, some different uh, stunts and games up front. So, but like I said, the kids, the kids are they're picking it up. Uh, they seem to have it, and uh, we're excited for practice to start so we can actually start playing football. The theme this year is all in. Um, can you talk about the theme? Yeah, you know what? It came from. I'll be honest, it came from. Uh, watching the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, they were talking to uh, Aaron Donald, who you know I think is the best defensive football player in the National Football League, and they were talking about uh, at the end there, uh, you know, it, when, uh, um, when, the, when their defense had to come up big for one last stop uh, to win the Super Bowl. And what he was saying is, putting, put in that environment, he had to go out and he had to strain one last time. And I thought of that, and if you ever watch Aaron Donald play, one of the reasons why he's as good as he is, I don't know if anybody plays as hard as he does. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's not the strongest guy in the world. Not the fastest guy in the world. But he puts it all together, and he's really special. Because he plays so hard. He plays at a level that you know he, th there is nothing left in the tank. He's all in. Well, in order to get there, you also have to, you also have to be all in in your preparation. Mm -hmm. Preparation in terms of your mental preparation for the game as well as your physical preparation. So mm -hmm. that's really where it came from. So for us, you know, we looked at it as our kids are committed. You know, our, our kids, but you know what? We need to take it to that next level where, where we have to strain. We can't have anything left in the tank when we're playing. We've got to leave it all out there on the field. Not that it guarantees wins and losses, but at least you walk off the field and know that you gave it everything that you had. And that is your preparation, you know, how you handle yourself as a student athlete during the day. Um, and then how you play during the game. And, and that's, so that's really been our focus. A lot of that, too, is you can relate that not just in sports, but more in life as well, with life challenges as well. Sure. And that's, that's good football teams are made up of character young men. Mm -hmm. And we can't cut corners. And by character young men, classroom, community, football field. Let's talk about the strengths of this year's group. You mentioned that. that you, what's the strengths for this year's football group? You know, uh, there's a lot of it. You know, it, 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 we might be, in my opinion, we might be one of the best kept secrets around. You know, because I'm, t I'm tired of reading the paper about uh, the three stars or four stars over mm -hmm. at this school or that school, and maybe we're zero stars. I don't know, but we're pretty darn good. We've got, uh, we're going to be big up front, big and physical up front on both sides of the ball. Off I, I've been really impressed with our offensive line, which is a mixture of some uh, older upperclassmen and some young guys. Uh, and our defensive line, we returned three out of four starters on defensive line and probably the best defensive lineman in the, in the league in Judy Kinney. Mm -hmm. So up front, I think, and that's where it starts. If you can be physical up front, which we will be, I think that goes a long way. Uh, we have a, a tremendous amount of speed on offense from wide, our two wide receivers or three wide receivers to uh, our slots, to our running backs. We are very talented there. Uh, you know, linebacking core, we've returned some kids who started. Uh, we have a, uh, a, t a transfer who came in from Jacksonville who's going to play one of our linebacker spots, mm -hmm. who uh, top-notch young man uh, in Caden, and he, uh, he's been a great leader for us all summer, so that's, that's a big bonus for us. He can also mm -hmm. kick over and play wide receiver. Secondary's young, but they're experienced, and they're good athletes. It's, f it's four real good athletes back there, and we see, I say four, there's you know, six or seven kids competing but we're really happy with their athleticism, and I, you know, I think it's going to be a big area of improvement. What challenges do you, or what challenges do you guys have to um, address? Learning a new system, number mm -hmm. one. Uh, there's no weeks off. Every game from Utica Eisenhower to Oak Park to Oxford, Rochester, has every week is a dogfight. There are no easy games. Uh, we need to stay healthy. You know, because even though I think we're we're reasonably deep, you just you know you need the you need to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a rookie quarterback. 
you know, we, I've got uh, uh, two kids right now on the varsity that will be competing for the quarterback job, and they're both good enough to play. Mm -hmm. One's a senior, one's a sophomore. Uh, they're both good athletes. Um, they've done a nice job this summer, but still it'll be, the, it'll be their first go at it in terms of mm -hmm. uh, Connor, who's our senior, he played last year a little bit as a backup. So he's got a little bit of varsity experience, but uh, Tristan was our starter on their JV last year. Um, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's, a, it's a different deal. When you're in charge, when you're running the show and you're the starting quarterback on Friday night, it's a different deal. So we have to do a great job of getting those guys ready to play. Talk about the, the support in the community, particularly from the pep club. How important is that? Uh, you know, the uh, pep club does so much work year round behind the scenes. And as simple as, you know, some of the either fundraising activities and, and uh, they reach out to several businesses who support our program. I mean, Lake Orion has always supported their student athletes, um, you know, all student activities. You know, they, they really do, you know, it's, it's a great place to raise kids and, and uh, I can't say enough about the community support. But the pep club works tirelessly. And, you know, for example, we're gonna, you know, we've got double sessions coming up uh, starting on Monday. Mm -hmm. And our last session is an evening practice. Well, I'm able to call our pep chairs and say, hey, we'd like to feed the kids before we get into evening meetings. And lo and behold, they've got dinner plan for them. So things like that, just supporting the kids, making it a little bit easier. Uh, I think I think in some respects, the kids, uh, I don't know if our kids know how good they have it. We constantly tell them this stuff doesn't go on in other programs. But we've got some really special parents who, uh, and we have for years in the pep club. Pep club, you know, ever since the mid-90s when it was formed, has mm -hmm. always gone above and beyond for our players. Mm -hmm. Can relate to that as well. Seeing um, Also, uh, mention how important alumni is to Lake Orion football. Well, it's great because the guys are connected. and constantly get messages from guys wishing us good luck. Uh, you know, share messages of, of what playing football meant for them. Mm -hmm. This time of year, you know, when you've been a football player or a football coach, this time of year is special. You know, it's just a different feeling, in, you know, a different smell in the air, that different feeling that we got to mm -hmm. be getting ready to do something. And uh, that's when, we, you know, the, the guys reach out. Um, and you know what's great, too, is we've got several alumni in our coaching staff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's several on our varsity staff that, that played for us, our JV staff, our freshman staff. So, uh, you know, that, that's great because they know how we coach the game. They know what our standards are. Mm -hmm. They know our systems, and uh, it's, they, they become good teachers. Awesome. Um, any final thoughts about the first segment? No, just, just really excited. Yeah, I think we've got a good group of kids. Uh, I've been so impressed with them through the summer, and uh, really excited to get going. Awesome. We'll be right back with the Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Hunt for treasures or sell a few of your own at Orion Township's Outdoor Garage Sale on Saturday, August 27th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Don't drag the kids from house to house wasting time and gas. The Community Garage Sale offers one-stop shopping in the parking lot of the Orient Center located on Joslin Road near Clarkston Road. Parking and admission is free. To reserve a space or for more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Teramina, also co-host of Between Teraminas and host of History Now. Um, I'm back with Coach Bell and Coach Simon. How are we doing, coaches? Very good. Doing good. Very good. Um, I want to talk about the schedule. Um, I'm also going to bring up the freshman schedule as well because uh, there are some different games in there as well. Um, coaches, you made mention it's one of the toughest schedules in the state. Um, start up this season against Utica Eisenhower at Swinehart. When you think of Utica Eisenhower, you tend to think about the perennial powers in the Mac Red, which is Ike, Romeo, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Chippewa Valley, and Macomb, Dakota. Um, what's your view on Ike? A lot of history. A lot of history. You know, we've had some great battles in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they were down last year. And uh, part of that was they lost their quarterback in the first quarter against us. Uh, after they scored to tie the game, uh, he was celebrating, mm -hmm. came down awkwardly in the end zone, and uh, tore his ACL. So he lost the season. 
Different team without the quarterback. Well, he's back. He's a junior. He throws it really well. They've got uh, pro they've got a great set of uh, skilled players, fast receivers. Um, they're going to be a big challenge for us, and they, they're always good. You know, you come off a bad season, they have a bad taste in their mouth. Coach mm -hmm. Smith over there is an outstanding football coach. They have a proud tradition, so it's going to be a dogfight for us right out of the gate. Coach Simon, I'll ask you the same question. Um, play Utica Eisenhower week one. What's your take on them? You have some experience going against Absolutely. Eisenhower in the past. Yeah, playing uh, playing at Chippewa Valley in high school and got given to play Eisenhower a few times. Had some good uh, rivalries there, and I'm always excited to play uh, Utica Eisenhower on the schedule. They're a tough team, very good coach team, and we're going to be very co good coach as well. We're going to come right back at them. So. Week two, we have our first home game of the season. We will play against Oak Park. That game will be on, o on ON TV. Mm -hmm. um, Oak Park, very well coached team. Um, Coach Carter does a fantastic job with his players. Um, what's your take about Oak Park? Same thing. They'll be very talented, uh, well coached. Uh, you know, we've had some battles with Oak Park over the years as well. Uh, again, there's no let up. And they've got, we saw some of our players today down at Media Day. They've got some outstanding players, and uh, they've been down the last couple of years. COVID was really hard on Oak Park mm -hmm. and uh, their program, but they've done a lot in the summer. They're excited to, uh, to set the ship straight there, so I, it's going to be another tough one. Our freshman team that week will be playing Romeo. Um, explain Romeo, Coach Lim. I'm very excited to play Romeo, another great MAC Red opponent. We're going to go against the best in the MAC and back, best of the OAA right away, back-to-back. -back, so. Um, I'm excited. I think the kids should be excited for it, and we're excited to have play the best teams, play the best teams. And um, I know later in the season we get to play Lance Cruz North as well, another program mm -hmm. that's that's up and coming. So um, that's two great battles for us that we're adding to the experience for the freshmen they get their freshman year, makes them stronger as they go along to their sophomore, junior, and senior year. So. Week three, go right into it for the Double O Trophy at Oxford against Oxford. Explain the Lake Orion Oxford rivalry, how much that means to you. Well, I, I, obviously, there's, there's two games mm -hmm. that uh, you know that if you're if you're at Lake Orion, you circle. You know, anytime you play a team that's wearing blue and gold, mm -hmm. and uh, you know Zach Lyons done a great job there. Um, you know, you, you're playing for uh, the Double O Trophy. It's always special. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what. Uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, what your records are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I also think too. I think another thing is the uh, the tragedy at Oxford has helped put things in perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Things more important than football. So you know, it'll be, sure. you know, it's not. A, it's 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 going to be a fun game, and we'll keep it that way. You know, they're mm -hmm. not they're not our enemies. They're our no. opponents. Um, you know, we have great respect for them, and they, they had a great season last year. They, and they said Zach's an outstanding coach, so it should be a fun football game. It always seems to be because it's always when you see the. The Lake Orion student section, the Oxford student section, they're all chanting like crazy. It's like, um, it's very exciting. It's very exciting for both communities. When done right, it's what a rivalry should be. Mm -hmm. Stay positive, support both teams, mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the game, you line up, you shake hands, and you do it with sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. And also, obviously, playing Oxford and also Clarkson, since, since they were pretty much the youth leagues. The youth levels. I the mean, kids know a each lot other. Of familiarity. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we were at uh, media day today, mm -hmm. and our players. When I was leaving, our players were over there before we left. They're over uh, talking with the Oxford players because mm -hmm. they, they know each other. They grew up together. You know, they played sports together. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that makes it more fun. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Simon, what's your thoughts about Oxford? I think it's important to teach um, as freshmen come in the, the tradition of rivalry and all the characteristics mm -hmm. that Chris said. And um, getting them to understand it and, and have fun with it, and, and we want to win every we want to win those games. But it's, it's good to it's good to bring that tradition to the kids coming in. So I'm excited for it. Week four, um, we host Rochester Adams. Adams was in the state championship last year. Tony Petrito, very good coach, runs the Veer, uh, Veer, which is ver which not very many high school teams run. Um, explain that one. Well, they re they they lost some seniors but not many they return mm -hmm. a great class including arguably maybe the best athlete uh in the league in terms of uh parker peacoat so mm -hmm. as a quarterback he's a handful um you know they have a great wide receiver um in pre you know who's mm -hmm. got division one offers from every school around and deservedly so he's mm -hmm. a great athlete so uh that that's just, that's another huge challenge you know it's uh but again, you know, and Tony does a great job. Nobody runs the veer better than he does. He, he's a very good coach. He'll have him ready, have him prepared, very aggressive on defense. Uh, so we know what we're going to get, and uh, we'll be ready for him. 
Coach Simon, what's your take? I'm very excited to play Rochester Adams, and it's just another great uh, freshman game for them to have. It's five or four or five straight games in a row that are just like going to be tough teams, and that's what's going to make us better. And Rochester Adams is a team that's going to make us better, and we're definitely excited for it. Going to be on the road at um, at Stony Creek next for Week Five. Uh, what's your take about Stony Creek? Well, Stony Creek, uh, they return uh, almost every starter from last year. They lost mm -hmm. very few seniors. Um, they're going to be better. Mm -hmm. Another team that's very well coached. Uh, their defensive coordinator uh, Gary Griffiths does a great job on defense. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the old Troy High coach, and yep. very you know they, they're they're always fundamentally sound. And Coach Merlo on the offensive side, you know, he he has them going. So. Uh, they've done a great job. What do you think, Coach Hunt? Another great team to, to play and go against. You know, they were very well uh, coached last year, well organized, and did a great and they did a great job against us. And we're going to look for the same outcome this year. So, week six at West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield won the perennial powers in the OAA. Um, West Bloomfield has really, really improved a lot since 2013, and has really gotten better since. Um, explain how West Bloomfield. They've got, you know, they've got athletes all over the place, and they've got, uh, but, you know, they're good. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, but they're like anybody else. I mean, we'll see, you know, by the time you get down to week six, you know, they, you know, if teams, teams stay healthy, they, all teams should be, should be playing well. Uh, they definitely present some challenges. Mm -hmm. By the same token, I think, there, I think there's some things that we'll be able to do that will present challenges to them as well. Mm -hmm. Coach Simon? Um, yeah, even though we went 9-0 last year, um, West Bloomfield gave us one of the biggest challenges and scored the most points against us, and they were able to air the ball on us a little bit. So on a defensive mind that I am, I want to be able to try to get back at that and notice what I did last year and get better at it and put better schemes in, in place to keep their, uh, keep their points down. So it's going to be exciting. Week 7, homecoming against Clarkston. Uh, another blue and gold team, homecoming. How excited about that one? You know, again, it's... it's uh, Great opportunity for us. You know, homecoming is always a, always a big game. It's always it's uh, coaches love it, and coaches hate it at the same time because mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. There's a lot of distractions. You, you know, you hope your kids are are rested and, and have enough in the tank ready for the for the ball game. Uh, Clarkson returns one of the best backs in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a, an offensive lineman who just signed with Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So again, they they're gonna you know they, they're gonna be very good. Yeah. It's important for the freshmen to, to get to know about the um, traditions of homecoming week and you know, the stuff they get to do with it, but also to make sure they have the right mindsets, get ready to win that game Thursday, and then go cheer on their team Friday. So um, just, we're going to be excited to teach those traditions to them as well. So. Week 8, playing North Farmington at North Farmington. Um, and motivation for week 2 from last year? Or different team? Yeah, you know, different team. Um, but they put it to us last year. Mm -hmm. you know, they put it to us down there at North Farmington. And that's... It, that's basically now Farmington Hills Harrison. Mm -hmm. That staff went over as I was coaching at North. They've got some really good athletes. Or, you know, they're, they're well coached, uh, and we will have our work cut out for us. Our freshmen will be playing Lance Cruz North that week, that week as well um, at home, and we made mention of them earlier. Uh, right. Week 9 to close the season, playing Celine. Very, very good team, very good program. What's your take about Celine, the Hornets? Well, they'll have, they'll have one of the state's best quarterbacks, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I forget his first name, but it's uh, but Carr. Carr, you know, Lloyd Carr's grandson, mm -hmm. just signed with Notre Dame, and he's going to be a junior. Um, they haven't lost a regular season game in like five years. Uh, now, also, their league isn't like our league either. Mm -hmm. So uh, they welcome the, f the chance to play better teams before they get in the playoffs. So it's a mm -hmm. good game for them as well. So it should be entertaining. The ball's going to be in the air a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think we'll match up pretty well. What you take about last year playing Celine, Coach Lyman? It was one of our tougher teams to play, and that that game last year was was exciting. It was two eight and zero teams going against each other, and it was it was a good fight. And you know, this year we get to drive out there, which is a little bit of a far drive, but we're going to be excited for it and bring that same kind of intensity to that game. So we're excited to play a really good team again. So that's a full season of good teams. So awesome. Um, I want to talk about the coaching staff this year, Coach um, the Varsity coaching staff. Um, you have great assistant coaches back as well. Coach Black Sox back. Can you explain the assistant coaches? Yeah, you know it's. Uh, it, I'm only as good as our assistant coaches. You know, we work together. It's not. It's not one guy. It's. It's everybody doing their job. Um, it's shared decision making. 
uh, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, Coach Powell is one of the best young coaches I've been around. Uh, he knows it inside. Now his teams are prepared. Uh, so, you know, he's just, it's been fun to watch him coach. And, uh, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, from, you know, Vinnie Booker's up with us after, you know, he played for us. Now he's going to coach the running backs. Rob Karagosian is back as the offensive line coach. Uh, DJ Reed's going to be coaching our wide receivers. DJ played at Central Michigan. He coached our wide receivers last year. And Eric Jennings is, uh, coach e. is, coach e is going to be with us on the offensive side as well. So, you know, we've, we've had the summer to, uh, to really install our schemes. Uh, it's a hardworking group. Um, so, they, they, you know, they're really excited to, uh, we're going to be well coached on both sides of the ball. Can you talk about the JV coaches, coaching staff? Yeah, you know, Bobby Klaus is uh, coming back. Bobby played mm -hmm. for us, uh, graduated in 2007, I believe. No, 2005. 2005, all right. <laughs> Somewhere bit. around I'm there. Old James guy. <laughs> well, Bobby's back. He's going to be teaching math in the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Kyle Larson is back as our, the, his offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with, with their assistance, you know, they're, they're in good hands there. So Bobby's done a great job this summer. Awesome. Um, we talk about the freshman coaches, Coach Simon, um, obviously your head coach. Um, can you talk about your coaching staff? Absolutely, I'm always as good as they are. And um, there's not going to be a freshman team that's going to, or a freshman coaching staff that's going to work as hard as our, as our uh, freshman coaching staff will. We got Coach Helm, uh, he's come up to be offensive coordinator. He's doing mm -hmm. an excellent job. Coach Cathcart, um, who also graduated from Lake Orion, I forgot mm -hmm. what years it was, but he uh, does an excellent job in the weight room and brings a lot of energy to the kids. Mm -hmm. Coach Conslick, uh, O line, D line guy, is going to bring a lot of good experience for us. And then we just added Coach uh, Brad Neary, who was also, I believe, a Lake Orion grad. 05. 05, yep. And mm -hmm. he's going to be a great eye for the wide receivers and DBs. So we got five guys who are going to we're going to bring it all and give the kids a lot of opportunities. So we're, we're excited for that. Coach, what's the goals? I'll start with Coach Bell first, then I'll go to Coach Simon. Um, what's the goals for the sub-varsity programs to develop or to win games, to develop? Um, what's the goal for the sub-varsity? The goal is to learn the system, learn how to be high school football players. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to have fun. Um, the goal is for them to uh, develop uh, great habits, friendships, uh, and it's also important to win. They do keep score, mm -hmm. and winning breeds winning, and we want them to, uh, you know, to do the things necessary that allow them to be successful. Uh, so you, know, you get to the varsity level, it's about winning and winning championships. Mm -hmm. At the sub-varsity level, we want them to be successful. We want them to, to win. Uh, but we, but more importantly, we want them to learn how to be high school football players. And like I said, they're you know they're building the foundation at those levels. I want to talk about program strengths before I talk to Coach Simon about the goals. Um, program strengths. Um, how many kids are on every program for varsity, JV, and freshman? It's you know it will probably carry uh, a little over sixty on the varsity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the JV, uh, we should be upwards of about forty-five. Mm -hmm. And I expect we'll be there as, on the freshman as well, about 40 to 45 on the freshman as well. Okay. Coach Simon, uh, what's your goals for the sub varsity? Yeah, just to teach them all of our schemes, you know, have, make sure they're having fun, make sure every kid, you know, feels, like, feels important to the team. You know, no matter where they are on the depth chart, it's very important for them to feel like they belong on the team and that their, their role is important. And we make sure that that's going to be the case for us. And, um, you know, we, we're going to promote winning games. We're going to do our best to win games, but to understand that sometimes if we lose games, we know there's things we can fix. You know, there's always a 24-hour rule. You know, if we, mm -hmm. we win games, there's things you can fix. Lose games, there's things you can fix. You know, it's not the end of the world. We can always be better. We can always grow. That's one of our biggest goals as a freshman squad is to, to always grow. So, Coach, can you talk about the middle school program and the youth league programs, how much they mean to Lake Orion football? Well, there are feeder programs. You know, and I think uh, we ran a middle school camp this summer numbers were outstanding so we'll be able to go back to we think two eighth grade teams two seventh grade teams uh, got some great coaches down there and then uh, the youth league the youth league has been way since going way back you know but the uh, uh, youth league has always been a huge feeder program mm -hmm. for us so you know as long as it, the biggest thing at the sub varsity at the, at the lower levels is you got to have the right coaches who coach it the right way you know mm -hmm. the younger they are the more fun they need it Football's fun regardless, but the seriousness goes as you get older. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're younger, it's about having fun, about loving the game, and, uh, these, and the, they do a good job of that. Coach Simon, what's your thoughts about the, because you'll, you'll be, the middle school 
kids will be coming into fr the freshman programs. Absolutely. So, um, what's your take about the middle school levels? Well, the middle school coaches have done an excellent job. You know, we've been able to talk to them a lot this year, just getting my spot as head coach, talk to them a little bit about what they're doing, and um, I'm going to be able to go watch a couple of their games. And the kids who came from the middle school camp, they worked really hard. And that's what I want to see as they come in as a freshman, they're, that they know how to work really hard, they know how to put the effort in, and, and that they're going to be that, that they're going to be ready to go. As far as the um, youth league camps, that's that's where it all starts. That's where the excitement of playing football starts. So that is very important that the coaches bring that aspect at those levels. And um, we had a youth camp that was that Coach Blackstock ran. It was absolutely excellent, mm -hmm. and um, you know it was good to see those kids come out. And I'm excited to keep watching those kids as well. We're going to try to get out to a couple of their games too. So it's going to be cool. All right, um, I want to talk about expectations. I'm going to start with Coach Simon, then I'll start with then I'll go with Coach Bell. Um, Coach, what's your expectations about the um, about the season for freshmen and then the program? Well, like I said, it's, it, we're, we want them to be ready to work. They want them to come in ready to work and ready to get better and understand that you know when they come in, they're still learning. And those couple, first couple weeks, they make mistakes. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna correct them. But um, we're, we're, we want to see the energy. We want to bring, see the intensity level come, and uh, we want them to grow each and every day as they come in and play football for us. So. Um, that's one a couple of our big expectations for them, and uh, have fun, and hopefully we bring that fun aspect to it. And next year they tell their friends, and we get those numbers grow. We want those numbers to keep growing, and uh, br get some big number, get some big numbers by the time they get to the varsity level. So. Coach Bell, what's the expect? What's your expectations? So, you know, a couple things. He, you know, in terms of uh, for each of our players individually, I want them to, I want it to be a positive growth experience. So I want them to have fun. Uh, I, I want them to. Uh, realize that uh, I feel good about the work that they're putting in you know it's, it's for, for a lot of our young men playing high school football are some of their fondest memories it's hard it's going to be hard we're going to make it hard we're going to work them hard but it's but by working hard that's what makes it special you know we want our group of group of young men to feel like they're elite they're doing things that uh, other teams aren't going to do they're going to work harder than other teams are willing to work you know for the season our, our focus has to be to control what we can control you know, we went down that list of all nine teams. They're all mm -hmm. very, very good. Yep. They all have talent, and so do we. So we have to be good at what we're going to be good at. We have to be fundamentally sound. It sounds basic, but we've got to block, tackle, protect the ball, get off blocks. All right? we, we have to do the fundamental things better than anybody else. And If we can do that, we're going to be successful. We just have to play better football. We have talent. Um, there's some great players on the other side. But you know what? We've got some pretty special players as well. Our key is make sure fundamentally that we are fundamentally sound, and that's going to lead to uh, some success. Awesome. All right. Thank you, got Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you for having us. Um, if you want to catch Lake Orion football, I encourage you guys to come to Dragon Stadium to come and support the guys. And uh, if, you, if you're not able to make it, Come watch us on Orion Neighborhood Television or Dragon Broadcasting, WDBC. Um, also, have a, also, I look forward to a great season. Coaches, looking forward to seeing you guys on the sidelines for freshman games and, and for varsity games. Thank you. Should be a, Thank it should you. be a great, great season. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're heading on off. Take care and hope to see you at a football game. Take care, Dragon Nation. <laughs>